Welcome back. Another beautiful day here as we get ourselves into game two of our series. Nine Pandas taking on one move. Eastern European DPC, of course, in Division 1. And Wagen Nine Pandas yet again showing why they're at the top of the table. Very, very smooth gameplay from them. It didn't feel like at any point they were they were under real pressure. Yeah, no. Nine Pandas, they looked like they were just really well prepared. They drafted a lineup that worked well within itself, but also managed to sprinkle in some counters to one move and what they were doing. They just, you know, did everything that is what it means to play at the top level of Dota. You managed to both counter the enemy and draft something super strong yourself and then execute it in a flawless way. They only had four core hero deaths in total that game, and most of those core hero deaths came at a great price, usually losing multiple heroes for a single kill. One move, they were just struggling to get anything in that game. I think they were maybe a little bit stressed. You could easily see how they were just trying to make too many rotations, perhaps early on even, instead of trying to perhaps play uh, to what they had available to them. The I go back to the Ricky a little bit there on the mid lane, mm. having that early Meteor Hammer. Maybe they needed to try and crack down on towers harder to open up the map. Ultimately though, I think Nine Pandas, a big reason to their success was also that they had the vision advantage. They had the Beastmaster and there was no real vision advantage for one move and that can leave you flailing sometimes. Yeah, like when you're trying to utilize this Moonlight Shadow to you know, hunt people, start, start a fight, you've got Hawks and sentries, observers everywhere, Solo just planting his body in front of people. It was, uh, it was incredibly difficult. I mean, during the break, I tried to refresh my memory because we had seen one move utilize this Crystal Maiden Man Marana support duo very well against Walekum Nihao. And, uh, you know, laning phase went kind of poorly for them. And then six minutes onwards, they were just smoke ganking time after time to play into their into their core heroes' lanes. Whereas, like you're saying, this time around, it was kind of core heroes trying to stem the flow of bleeding out of the laning stage that Ricky was moving. Uh, trying to get that timber saw involved was a bit of a struggle as well. Just meeting the brick wall of nine pandas core heroes that after 15, even after 10 minutes, were, were seemingly unkillable. Yeah, I also think a lot of it comes back to, you know, the rotations they made in that game that we had seen before was against Duelakim Nihao, who are just not at the same pedigree as nine pandas. Yeah. Nine pandas, they're playing good Dola. They're showing up here. They're doing what they're supposed to be doing. These are solid players and you can't really get away with too many mistakes when you're playing against uh, someone at this level. And one move, we talk about them as though they, they are the team that has a chance to break into like the top here in this division, but they're not really it yet. They need to prove themselves. Granted, this is only game one though. This is a best of three. They still have the chance to, uh, to take it. They sure do. I, the only really disappointing thing from Nine Pandas in the last game was they didn't pick Tinker. Honestly, we talked it up so much. No expecting this to come out. I uh, might see it here in game two. Now Kiyotaka's warmed up on his invoker. He was spamming invoke non-stop in the first two minutes of the laning stage. We'll see how things unfold as it looks like the draft is pretty much ready for us to jump into. And we'll get our first round of bands coming in. Now, are there any heroes you would respect as one move or try and remove early on that you had to face in the previous game? Um, I, I think Beastmaster for me is a hero that you just have to be concerned about. That hero should probably not slip through the first phase bands in general. I think it can be very, very problematic to deal with unless you have a really good game plan for it. And last game, I just didn't really see that from Nine Pandas or from One Move, sorry. Hmm. I feel like they had a decent lane. The CMCK was strong for laning stage, sure. But going out of that, the Beastmaster still managed to get his farm. The Skywrath did a good job protecting him and just dealing a lot of magic damage. So uh, we'll see how they approach it here. Looks like they're going to ban out the, the Magnus and the Spirit Breaker as their first bans here. The Spirit Breaker, yeah. Well, we've seen a fair amount of it, you know, both support and offlane. Such a great hero to yeah, get in on top of people. Meaning. And it might be an indicator of, of things to come if that Tinker does find a spot in the first phase of picks. Meaning. And nine yeah. pandas, second ban. So do Magnus Spirit Breaker gone? In the previous game, we had the Techies and the Medusa. Yeah, they rush out the Pango they ban instead. Something they did ban in the second phase last game, but this time, not gonna wait. So Medusa is available. Techies gets picked up by one move. This does leave that Medusa that wasn't, uh, you know, touched at all as a possible pick for nine pandas themselves here. I think they could set up a nice safe lane. You know that you're against Techies. Techies almost always plus four hero. Mm. Um, and they could, you know, structure this the way they want. I would say that Medusa is a pretty damn good hero against Techies in many ways as well. So wouldn't be surprised to see them take Beast, of course. 
again. He is level 30 Beastmaster, and the hero is insanely good in the current patch. That Aghanims is great, and even if you don't go Aghanims, Beastmaster is just in a great spot right now overall. With the popularity of aura builds, Beastmaster is the go-to offlane aura hero. There's none better. Yeah, he just covers so many bases. You know, offlane aura hero pushes towers, controls zones on the map, gives yeah. vision, and good he's lockdown. great at just yeah, yeah. kickstarting a fight. Right, you you get blink as like fourth, fifth items. You blink raw. That's a kill. Yeah, I mean, BKB piercing disable is fantastic to have in your team as well. It, it covers a lot of bases, like you said. It's fantastic sense of security having this. So I'm sure nine pandas already feel pretty confident getting mm. that. Uh, one move though, getting techies. It feels like. Maybe they will set up a really obnoxious offlane, um, some type of high damage offlane harassing lane, which uh, could maybe get them a better start on the offlane than they had last game. That um, was a little bit shut down, I want to say, by the Undying. Uh, will we see the return of Undying here? Will we get a first phase attention? Or is this going to be the same? Run it back. Okay. A man with the chicken feet and comes into play yet again. Yeah. One two combo. I mean, Beast Skywrath, they complement each other so well. I think if you're a Beastmaster spammer, surely Skywrath has to be the single best Ten hero for you to pair remaining. up with. You have that burst, you have that roar into, uh, into uh, Skywrath ulti. Remaining. Absolutely mm. fantastic. And the laning stage is great. You have so much spam, harass, magic damage. It's just fantastic all the way around. Yeah, like in, the, in the previous game, we saw CK have to buy raindrops very early on, spamming salve just to stay in the lane. Yeah, it makes things uncomfortable for your opponents, that's for sure. Now, and previously, you... one move have played DK with the techies, just to have that, you know, solid stun into blast off, into damage over time. What other heroes would you look for? Like Primal Beast or something? Yeah, I, w I would like Primal Beast more. DK is an option. He did get that base attack time buff, at least, so he can scale a little bit harder, but I don't know if it's impactful enough. And again, it's a hero that I, I think can be dealt with Dying already with the tools backs. that nine pandas have started medusa. out with so they're gonna go for the medusa themselves i like this approach honestly because Radiant while medusa back. does have some hard counters you can start shielding yourself now this was the last pick in the first phase so you ban out the anti-mage probably gonna see the invoker ban as well maybe we'll even see something crazy like a nyx ban though usually nyx is played as a post four hero he's not really that popular post five mm -hmm. um Ten seconds so i doubt that we'll see it but am Pretty much uh, the best hero in the entire game against Medusa makes sense. You just played against the Invoker as well. So there's no way one move slipped the Invoker here. They, they just cannot. Let's make sure it's out of there. And what, what do you want to pair with this Medusa? You know, do you, do you want a stacker full of steroids with you know, buffs out of uh, out all these heroes? Do you want Cottle for the mana, the Chakra Magic? Yeah, I mean, steroids is exactly the word that came to my mind when you said, what do you want to pair it with? You want to you want to roid that thing out, make her as strong as possible. You want her to be your beast uh, in these fights. Possibly, um, possibly you want to have something uh, to heal her up as well. The Caudal is an option. Pugna gets banned out by Nine Panda, so wouldn't be surprising to see them ban Caudal as well, since it could be just a Caudal plus Medusa lane even. And then you have Chakra being uh, essentially a purification, like a stronger purification yeah. for Medusa. Um, I think those are definitely Five some keys remaining. that I would look towards here. Nine Pandas, though, they're taking their time after the Pugna ban. So they see the Slark ban as well, which isn't really a Medusa um, issue necessarily. It can be annoying, but this is more speaking to what one move want to put on that offlane. They're going to ban out the Ench themselves. Another hero that is great at dominating early game. Good against Beastmaster. You can steal his boars. And uh, possibly a very annoying early game hero. They just trade with the Sky, right? They continually harass him. Remaining. Yep. Kick him out of lane. I guess that's that's one of the key things here. You need to keep this Beastmaster and Skyrath Mage afloat. You don't want any any shenanigans where, you know, dragging waves and, and pulling that Sky away from the lane happens. You want to be fully focused on damaging the Medusa. Building up stacks of those axes. Yeah. And I guess we. A, a possible downside that I'm seeing here as well, by the way, is that one move, if they forget about it and Nine Pandas go back to it, there's still the part that we talked a lot in the first draft about Tinker. Medusa is not the type of carry who's happy about being against the Tinker. 
She's super low mobility. She needs her right clicks. So laser giving mischance and Tinker being very elusive in general. It's not a fun matchup for a Medusa. So and Beastmaster again being a good pairing. I think nine pandas. If they don't get this hero banned out here, it definitely would be a solid option for them. It's like a case of, hey, Medusa has infinite HP. Ah, oh, Tinker has infinite damage with yeah. rearm, right? Just deal with that, with that that way. Get through the mana shield. Yeah, and continuously sitting back and spamming those lasers, it, it just mitigates all the all the attempts that Medusa has to have impact in the fight. And even the Manta style Medusa, which can be so tricky to deal with for a lot of heroes, is again not really a problem for Tinker. Radiant um, team back. But one move again, gonna ban out the similar type of heroes that we saw in the last game, banning out those Slarks. The the Monkey King now was the only hero we didn't see banned when they were protecting their Timbersaw in last hmm. game, banning out the Bloodseeker, the Slark, and the Ursa. Um, and Nine Pandas, if we're talking about carries here, Ursa could be an option for them as well. Um, that's a hero that honestly pairs pretty well with Beastmaster again in terms of getting easy Roche. You have both a yeah. fast Roche taker and a vision from Beastmaster giving safety. Uh, you can burst people during the Primal Roar really nice. And matching up against Medusa, yeah, she's tanky, but Ursa can build Diffusal and he also scales. You're tanky? Okay, I keep getting stronger every single hit. It's going to hurt more and more. Sooner or later, you're not that tanky. Here, here he comes. It's happening. Waka, <laughs> it's happening. A bounty on this picked and now it's like, oh god, we didn't ban the Tinker. Yeah, but do you, you don't want to pick Tinker into Beast and Bounty and Sky. This is exactly you can't really take it if you want to move. Even though Ten they have a fantastic remaining. Tinker player themselves in Aincrud, this is again just leaving it. And Five if seconds, really nine pandas seconds. don't go for Tinker here, that means they have something they consider to be even better here in this situation. <laughs> so you shouldn't even be happy if they don't pick Tinker. You should be concerned if they don't. <laughs> um, so one move, they have a tricky spot here. These two picks they're mm. making now are imperative to their success. They're going to go with Underlord to lead, giving them some form of AoE control. Would be good if the enemy had a carry that Underlord matches well against, but you don't know for sure what it's going to be yet, right? That's it, the thing. You're picking it blind into that potential Ursa you mentioned. Yeah. Ten if it's Ursa, then remaining. that's not really a great situation. It can be okay. Techies plus Ursa Five can actually... Or Techies plus Underlord can actually harass the Ursa a lot. And Ursa doesn't have any safety plus five here you have probably a bounty plus five mm -hmm. uh which doesn't really Radiant protect team. you it doesn't zone um meanwhile one move themselves they get the zoner they take the undying here so that's going to be able to probably keep the medusa Dyer safe i assume this is going to be a undying plus medusa and there's that tinker baby <laughs> yeah shows his ugly face uh... smoking his pipe as always this doesn't look great for one move, man. Uh, this draft yeah. already looks over to me. Like, it, it looks bad, dude. Um, uh, Ten um, seconds remaining. It, uh, they need some form of hyperactive Five fighting hero. They need, remaining. like, a Void Spirit Radiant or something on back. one move. Something back. that can fight. Yeah, Batroid well, gets banned by band. Nine Pandas. That would also fit. I mean, if you ban Bat and Void Spirit, there's, like, Storm Spirit still out there? Yeah, there's Ember, there's Storm. There, there's some options uh, they can go for. There, there are certainly a few heroes, but it's just so Ten much weight on that mid player's pressure or mid player's uh, shoulders again. And that's what yeah. we saw in one move remaining. when they were playing in a previous series as well. Uh, that Aincrad had to go full Giga Chad mode in hard carry. This, this game, I think, if their mid laner we doesn't have a good game, it's going to be near impossible for them, mm -hmm. just draft wise. I mean, one move have pretty decent ways of, of disengaging and resetting fights because it, it feels like they want to be able to you know, weather the storm and get to this critical mass point of Medusa. You know, 25 minutes in, she's still in a, a similar spot to previous patches around that timing with Manta plus another item. But actually taking team fights, you know, head on, going into raw Mystic Flare, being tracked up, all the visions on you with the Hawks, and you see, there's so much just vision being spammed advantage. at you. Yeah, I mean, track plus Hawk, you're gonna oh, have so many rockets flying, and there we go, they ban out the Storm, they think that's the most annoying one. Mm. Uh, probably would be true as well, because he has no cooldown, Radiant right? He's the best at continuously chasing. They go Primal Beast. He can function similarly uh to those heroes he's low cooldown he can get in there 
Uh, you have a BKB piercing disable, which can be nice to have. They didn't have one previously in their draft. They had like Medusa ulti, if that counts, but hey, you know, you can just look away and uh, that doesn't work. So Prime Beast, I haven't seen it pause too much recently, but one move, probably going to be running it here on the, on the mid lane, I assume. Yeah, I'd assume so. Like, it's interesting you bring up because I've I've seen more mid Underlord than I have seen mid Primal Beast over the past two months or so. Yeah, I was wondering if there's any kind of shift up there, but yeah, I guess you want your Primal Beast to be the guy that charges in, gets on top of the Tinker. You're going to need some really, really good wards here. Like, Und Undying and Techies have a lot on their plate to make sure the vision is up. And oh, hmm. Alk. I think it has to be mid uh, Primal Beast because uh, mid Underlord, you need Tempo and Primal Beast, right? He needs to be the one to charge and like lead the way in the ganks yeah. and do things here. He needs the while, levels for it. Yeah, while the Medusa's farming. So he needs levels, he needs items, he needs priority. And Nine Pandas, they round out the draft with an Alchemist here, which again is a hero that is just one more problem to deal with if you're the side of one move. Also, Alchemist into Undying, I'm a big fan. You can always farm those uh, zombies a little bit extra, you know, get some money. They can do some cheesy stuff. More more of a tidbit, though, but this draft from Nine Pandas looks very powerful. It's sickening. <laughs> it really is. Oh, is are, there, you know, are there any weaknesses to their draft? I'm, I'm kind of looking at Bounty Alk lane against this Underlord Techies as something that maybe one move can exploit. Yes. The the one thing that they have that's the weakest, I would say, is definitely that. Tinker is a pretty solid laner mid. He won't really be winning, I think, against Primal Beast. Primal Beast should be winning that matchup, in my mind. Uh, but the most exposed lane is probably the Alchemist early on here. And if they can really get away with a good start here on the back of Techies and Underlord putting a lot of pressure, then maybe that can op open up the map a little bit for those rotations from Primal Beast to take over the game. And they need tempo on one move, which is awkward because they're running the Medusa. But they need the four heroes uh, that are protecting the Medusa to actually have a good start. Well, we'll see if they can pick that tempo up and get the a beat per minute going as we head ourselves into game two. A quick message from EGB first, though. Bets on esports, bets on streamers, impressive bonus system, welcome bonus up to $600, cashback, artifacts, regular promotions, daily giveaways, try yourself as a bookmaker, great lines, egb.com, more than just a bookmaker. Size kind of <laughs> and off we go, that Beastmaster line had me chuckling for a second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny it's not the size of a beast in fight well actually size kind of helps that's funny yeah. against the uh, primal beasts you know yeah. he's the biggest beast there is exactly. he's the strongest hero in dota the biggest strength game they just throw a blood grenade at themselves i put a sentry oh. down i saw something pop off but yeah i think that was a mistake oops the daisy they're trying to play some vision and instead got blood grenade thrown at their own primal beast <laughs> enraging the beast getting ready for the fights that are coming as you've been saying, very important here for Ironcrad to, to pop off, really. It's it's all about this Primal Beast to get himself a good laning stage, transfer that into the ability to control the Tinker, because it's a Kyo Tinker. Yeah, Kyo Taka. A lot of eyes on his Tinker, definitely. I think a lot of people are probably going to be tuning in just because he's playing Tinker again here, to keep an eye on it. Um, he's going to be going up against the Primal Beast mid, and we see him do what a lot of Tinkers just do you buy the triple circlet get the branch get the fair fire very high stat build delaying the bottle a little bit but that's not really a problem you just want to be able to last it in the first creep waves well solo knows there's a sentry ward mid now he's hiding in vares and got a bomb chucked at him i have a good idea there's a bit of reveal in that mid lane as we'll see nine pandas set themselves up down there this gilga techies who wanted to try and rotate back into his lane and Taras and Solo throw him a blood grenade, a bit of chip damage. I don't know if they can actually finish him off with a stun and a bit more. They maybe can. The heat seeking oh, missiles are coming. It's perfect oh, timing. My. The he judgment gets... of damage there was gorgeous. Yeah, the fact that he gets the first blood from that as well and Tinker, of all things, that's not what you want to have happen. Oh boy. <laughs> game two starting, game one ended. A bit of a travesty already. Yeah. For one Top move, lane. but yeah. This, this is also where we say there's a lot of pressure on Minecraft's shoulders, but Punkman, he has to try and win this lane hard. You you are an undying. You always look towards undying to try and have the biggest possible impact, zoning and protecting your course. So 
Ideally, this Medusa should be free farming on the back of possibly undying uh, feeding a little bit and getting, you know, fountain TP out, plays. That's fine. As long as he's generating complete free farm, that's okay. Yeah, we can see already Miero with a few decay stacks on taking a lot of damage just from Medusa. Right clicks. Phantom M keeping himself tanky enough. Ah, that's staying power lane. Always undying's greatest strength. Okay, his problem B is just trying to do what he can. He's making all sorts of noises in the mid lane. And yeah, he's got he's... a bottle coming to him. He's got the bottle, got decent last hit so far, six and one. Tinker also looking at six and one right now, but he has a few creeps on the tower still, so seven and one. Slightly slightly ahead, but pretty even so far. Downside being though, Tinker getting that first blood, he just has the advantage. He's a little bit ahead in timing, gets the bottle faster, can allow him to control the map a little or the mid lane a little bit harder. Man, you can into that bottom lane. Oh, oh hang on. A kill up top. And Kushi and Pantomim take down Antares. And Miero bullied back under his tier one. Huh? Mid lane jump in from Aincrad. Gets the trample on Kiyotaka. He's lasered up and a bit scared of the creep wave arriving. So just trading blow for blow. That's what you want to have happen though. Getting a kill immediately with a tombstone. Also using a tombstone to farm a little bit. Bottom lane solo getting really low. He's alive, mm. but... Not the best hero for protecting, you know? This is the difference between a Bounty Hunter and an Undying. Uh, he can't really zone the Underlord and the Techies at all here. So they should be having a decent lane, but still Alchemist is finding farm. He's got 10 CS to his name, so Solo is gonna try and get back to base. Yeah, Undying there, just a, a product of the situation. You said he's just gonna be dying so he can refill full resources, return to lane, and get back into the thick of things again. Yeah, he'll come back and he'll bring some items as well. He's going to bring the Bassi for the Medusa and probably Mango her up as he arrives as well. Get her, you know, HP, I suppose, up a little bit by the mana. Yeah, that, that bottom lane, it's not, not as much from the Underlord and Techies as maybe I thought it would be. They've not pressured the Alchemist too heavily. We've already got the net worth board up on the, on the screen. It's only four minutes in, but you're just seeing that Tinker, 2,100 compared to the 1500 of the primal beast you know, needing to bring out additional bits of regen as a move up top solo shift through the twin gate monkushi pops a pretty hefty one there to get all that hp and mana back but the damage from the axes and the arcane bolt still come monkushi surviving barely through all that stacking damage and they turn onto pantomime now but gilligan shows his face blasts off in on towards miero these ones getting a lot of value another turnaround just back and forth swings and roundabouts as solo is going to be the one that dies in the end Everyone is solo HP on this top lane. I like the initial rotation there coming up top, but they're instead gonna get the kill. Position five. Tears flowing down their faces. Yeah, Most mana boots now as well on Beastmaster, so that allows the Skyra to spam even more. Gonna be dealing all the damage they can here with the magic spam. So this leaves bottom lane to be sort of a 1v1. We see a bottle refill mid, TP by Bounty. And Kiyotaka. Gonna be able to heal back up with that. Yeah, Another boss one. refill, Pantomo. Yeah, <laughs> Pantomo and Solo having very similar games. Uh, kind of relegated to bodyguarding their carry heroes in the first three minutes, rotating to try and save their offlaners, refilling bottles in a mid lane. Oh, Monkushi. Oh, no mana left. Has already spent the wand. Dive under tower. That's a lot of damage. He's so low HP. 252 max. Blasted down by the axes and the bolts. At least they get a trade off there in killing the Beastmaster. But every death for, for Medusa feels so impactful. Yeah, it's really hurtful because, as I said, you want to generate complete free farm from Medusa here and look at the CS or look at the net worth, whatever you look at. Medusa, she's not the highest, right? Like, she is. She needs to be one of the most farmed on the map here when you have this Undying and uh, Medusa lane. And Solo making another move up here. They do get a tombstone drop down, but Pantomime's going to lose that quickly. Bonus gold for Miero. Solo, can he get there with another invis and a stun? They need a bit more damage from the axes. Not quite finishing the job. And Miero's going to focus on the creep wave instead. Yeah, like you said, Alk getting a lot of free reign down in this bottom lane now. Until Gilgir comes back. Concoction being cooked up by Ramses, and that will keep them at bay. Yeah, throws that out. There's one timing that is going to be coming up, by the way, that is very important. That's going to be a blink timing here on the Tinker. Because the moment he has that... 
He could either just go and farm, of course, but he can also go and shut down the Medusa even harder. She's already not having a great lane. Primal Beast. Yeah. A bit here. He's level six. He'll try and pulverize the Bounty Hunter, but Anta is offering so much damage with a level four Skyrath Mage. That's just a swift movement in, and Nine Panda's going to rotate back into their side lanes. A little bit greedy for Minecraft, trying to go for that six minute rune, not having people coming over to try and protect it. And of course, both the supports from Nine Panda realize six minute runes are very important. First power rune, um, and taking that shield rune away from the Primal Beast and just killing him. Very impactful play. Oh, Ramsey's even getting a, a bit of time there to gather some lotuses. Bit of staying power for him to stick around in lane. That looks like Solo and Gilgir having some fun in behind that tier 1 bottom as well. I'm wanting to look at the Wisdom Rune. Solo, he sees a courier. Gonna snipe it out. That's boots for afterlife removed. Let's see what Gilgir does. Is this a blast off into the Wisdom Rune? Oh yeah. There it is. Hello. Come in. Take it. Solo. <laughs> that was a nice play oh, man, by nice. Gilgir sitting back and waiting. Meanwhile, Kiyotaka blows up afterlife with the help of that alchemist. The blink dagger timing, the ganking moves from Tinker already coming into fruition, like you said. That's such an impactful move going down there. That was the one lane that was really going well for one move, where they had a lot of farm. Now mids. Oh no. Oh man, Alinecrad. He's on this Tinker with a tombstone behind Kiyotaka. Hunter is trying to push them back, but a good onslaught in on Alinecrad. Tanky enough to withstand everything, helped out by that Undying. That was so big by Pantomim. The fact that he, he was on a ward journey, put down a ward behind, and he was ready to go in when Tinker blinks in, and they just man up with the Primal Beast, go for the grab. That's a really big shutdown for them, getting the double kill. This is the hero they need momentum on. Aincrad has to have a good game. Yeah, he jumps up to second in net worth now. What's the, what's the kind of itemization for the Primal Beast? Is it the usual phase into BKB? Probably, yeah. I mean, we see face Windlace, definitely the, the speed and the rush here. I would say maybe Kaiasanj rush. Uh, okay. PKB still suffers a little bit against some things here in this game. So I think Kaiasanj. Oh, it gets him. The yeah. ward. To Kiyotaka. Again, this ward. You're absolutely right. Paying off big time. Even portaling into the mid lane with the Underlord to make sure that Aincrad is safe and sound. And four heroes strong in this mid spot. Bullying Antares back, but they can't really push the tower just yet. Yeah, instead just gonna farm a little bit here. Use that arcane rune, low cooldown farming here. Steal some farm from the enemy. You can even see the flurry of pings from nine pandas like, hey guys, there's a ward up there for sure now. Yeah, finally gets dewarded solo, gets on it. But Tinker, that's back-to-back -back deaths and that slows down his game a lot. He was looking really strong. Still is the highest net worth out of every single core, but... He would have been so much farther ahead if he didn't die twice there. Yeah, so a bit more emphasis from Solo and Antares just to guard him a little bit. Yeah. Gets his Sol Ring finish now, though. I think Tinker is just going to go farm mode now. He's going to clear mid a little bit, get his Sol Ring, go over and take the stack on Ancients that has been prepared by Beastmaster. It's possible Beastmaster farms it for himself, but I think Kiyotaka might want it just by uh, the importance of getting farm on Tinker. One move getting into a spot where it's Underlord is incredibly tanky. Vanguard won plenty of stats. Oh, he wants to fight. He joins bottom. He comes in here and is looking at afterlife. And solo, he can start things off with that Shadow Walk stun. It comes off cooldown as well, so he gets the double stun in. Permanently disabling his Underlord. Gilgit jumps in aggressively, and so does Aincrad. The damage is overwhelming. Gets the kill and the catch on Tinker. Pantomem and Aincrad right on top of Kiyotaka, but there's no stuns remaining, are there? So he TP's home. He's going to be gone with that. Can't really shut him down. At least they got the return kill. The Alchemist kill is big for them there. But uh, Tinker, not going to die a third time here. Going to get himself the Dita rune top as well. Of course, has that superior mobility. So, well, Primal Beast had to run back towards mid lane. He already pushed Ella Wave and nothing got the rune. <laughs> the zombie chasing him from all the way across the map. Killed by the tower, but yeah, good good moves by the Dyer, making sure they get on top of that Alchemist, a couple of good kills, and probably most importantly, it's drawing attention away from Monkushi, getting that free farm which you desperately require on a Medusa. He is getting free farm. I also feel like this might be the issue though, where there are tools to deal with Medusa later down the road, so they're just accepting that, okay, farm Medusa, check, we'll deal with that later. Uh, it, it's not something they have to immediately stress about. Um, 
So instead, they're focusing on farming up. They're getting this Aghanims on Beastmaster by farming up the Aghanims uh, from Ancient Stack. And meanwhile, the Alchemist is still going to be the priority. One move, though. They want to shut him down. They're going bottom for this Alk. And try and catch out Ramses. Yeah, these, these, these stacks on the Radiant are super important. We've already got Skyrath Mage level 7 and a half. Bounty Hunter's about to clip level 6. But Ramsey is getting spotted out. Concoction is being brewed, but with a portal and the jump in from Kill Gear, planting the proxy mines, Ramsey dies. Pretty big rotation again from one move. A lot of resources expended to come down here. But if they can kill the tier one tower, it's, it's all worth it after taking the Alk's life. If though, because their heroes don't really have a good power pusher. There's no Beastmaster, there's no DP. This is really just a stand and hit the tower. Which can feel scary to do because Tinker can TP in and start spamming the rockets. So, how am I just live here? Yeah, they just left Afterlife down here to farm. And the drag the creep wave into the small camp. And they're shifting into mid to defend their tier one there. And they're starting to look like nine pandas. Yeah, we're going to make a concerted effort to, to fight around the mid tier one. Yeah. Tracks Meanwhile, now online. They do want to fight here, like you said, with the track up but they also prepped a lot of stacks again to stack the rest of the jungle for either beastmaster or tinker to clear as well they have a triple stack on the ancients double on the big camp yeah, building up bank for them and already one move playing very tight together I'm trying to make sure that f9 pandas show they can exploit that with overwhelming numbers solo poking away prodding pantomim gonna get slowed down though and pays with his life they're getting kills, but it doesn't always feel good because you are bringing core heroes together. And for now, it's just a farming game from the side of Nine Panda. The way I see it, they're trying to farm up their Alchemist. He's about to get Radiant soon, then it really takes off. And Beastmaster, same thing there. He's getting his Aghanims now. It's flying out on Courier. And that might just as well be a Radiance. It speeds up your farming so much. Yeah. Yeah, it's like Solo's death. Honestly, the, the information he gets and just the space he's created, well worth dying for. No, they do know. Yeah, he three heroes in mid. mid. Onslaughted, trampled, tombstone, chucks the Mystic Flare at this primal beast, though. And with the roar from Miero, they'll take him down. And Tara's still alive. The bombs, the zombies will claim his life eventually. But a two for one under that tier one mid. And Kiyotaka potentially looking to make another jump as Gilga is tracked up and the missiles are flying. Is that going to finish him? Looks like yeah, it will. They get the kills, so that's going to be a three for one there for nine pandas versus one move. Radiance top tower has fallen. Now going deep for this wisdom, though. I think this is a one-way ticket, maybe. Stone gaze TP. Any oh, stuns? No. Yeah, no, no, no stuns. They already roared on mid. Oh, uh, well done. Good job by Mankushi there. Ah, uh, nice little play. Gets both power and a TP out. And TP's to farm, doesn't even TP to base. So, really nice. Very efficient play here by him. This does potentially mean, yeah, yeah, relinquish control of that top lane completely now. You know, Miero with a little bit of additional help can take that tier one tower. It looks like for now, you know, Alchemist is doing his own thing, sat back in that pocket and that nice additional bit of jungle down in the southern part of the map. While oh, Aincrad, he's invis and he gets a grab onto Solo's bounty hunter. Antares and Kyotanka really just this impenetrable wall of damage that they cannot fly through. And they'll lose the Undying for this move. Yeah, and this is where we see the, the power of the track paired up with the Tinker. Just non-stop rockets. You have to start running away. You have to get far away. Because else you just keep taking damage. And that's going to be Tinker at 3.4k gold. That Shivas is getting closer. Oh. And Makushi's getting run at. A lot of his mana already gone. 19 one charges and a Lotus to play with. Gets a little bit of time here to heal back up as Miero. And realizing he's going to be a bit too deep now, I think. I'll TP in an additional hero to make sure he dies. That's five heroes here to kill He's the healing master. A lot, man. He is healing a lot, but he gets dispatched with in the end. Okay, he forced so many rotations, though. It's hard to even say if that was, you know, bad for him necessarily. Five heroes having to go to deal with a single hero. Obviously, he did get killed in the end, and that kill towards Primal Beast will help him a little bit. So I can almost well, hear no. their comms. Every time a Radiant Hero dies, you've got four heroes saying, thank you for dying. I've got so much space. 
yeah, they actually make them pay so much. Like, it's 12 for 12, but it feels like the kills they're getting on 9 pandas are so much more effortless, so much closer to uh, towers, and it's just more more easy to play for it, whereas one move they have to really struggle for these Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Ramses with his Radiance ready. Tier 1 bottom still alive. I mean, 16 minutes in, we've lost top Radiant Tier 1. Others defended. Die haven't lost a, a single tower yet. Kind of a weird map state to what I'm used to. Yeah, it's a lot of it comes back to the fact that Beastmaster hasn't been able to push top, but instead prioritize just farming. He's the one we would expect to take towers. Oh, nice smoke break from Solo. Uh, trying to snipe out this Undying. Lacking a little bit of damage, though. Solo and Antares both being blown up by the bombs. All right. I mean, they, they break the smoke, so no core hero is going to die. But at the same time, that's two more kills. I think one winner are happy with that. Now, 20 seconds without any support. Oh, Kiyotaka doesn't get the additional blink off. They're on this Tinker, and Ironcrown going to pummel him. Amira is arriving, though. Should be able to guard the Tinker, roar him up. And make sure Kiyotaka can offer the damage to bring Ironcrown down. It looked good for the Primal Beast for the first few seconds. But Kiyotaka with a circlet tanked through it all. Yeah, those, those circlets for a little bit of extra stats. And of course, with the Shiva's bottom, though, we see fight continuing. I mean, Ramses, they're going wild onto Pantomam and Solo, going to try and catch up to Afterlife. Uh, dusted him up so they see the bounty hunter coming, but now the tracks and the Tinker TP starts flowing. And Gilgir, oh, he's on the run, but I don't know if he can escape from this. Blast off to get a bit of distance. Heat seeking missiles, they know where you are, and there's two landing on your head right now. Three and four, gonna keep coming. Oh, it's just never ending, relentless damage from the Tinker. It's nasty stuff. He's, he's got a, a, a pipe buff placed on him, but he's probably still gonna die. I'm credit in the meantime, dusting solo, gets the grab on the bounty hunter, so at least something going their way, but it's always reacting. They're always on their side of the map, on the back foot. All these kills are just a kill for kill's sake. It's not an objective or a sweeping move forward that comes after. Yeah, it's pretty tough for them to try and get something more. I mean, they are ahead in the terms of the tower game um, on the side of one move. They have been doing some structural damage and they also have a big power spike now coming up as the butterfly is about to be complete soon for Monkashi. Downside is there's so much magical damage and that Tinker, we talked about it early on in the laning stage, in the drafting stage, before Tinker was even picked, I discussed how Tinker is a very good solution for Medusa here. Um, so yeah, you're gonna have evasion, but Tinker doesn't care. Not a care in the world. Ramsey's feeling pretty happy as well. Radiance Blink, ready to fight at any given moment. Oh, jumping onto mid. Do they have enough damage? No, Ironcrad seems okay for now. I mean, okay is a subjective term. He's not dead, which is okay, but he's also not feeling too alive either. He's got to farm one stack and then go back to base. If even that, yeah, he's changing his mind. He has to go back, get new resources. Sometimes... Getting a kill is great, but even getting the enemy down to lower HP can be just as good because it makes them, you know, out of play for a little while. Doing that to the team, uh, to the Primal Beast is the best hero possible. 4,000 gold in now, and it's building on the side of Nine Panda. They're going to have this nice confluence of items as well. The BKBs on Tinker and Alk. Everything's going to go inside very nicely. Ramses. Looking at Afterlife. Get him under the Acid Spray and the Roar from Miero is there as well. The rest of the die trying to come into play here with a Tombstone Drop. Fighting around Pantomime and Ironcrad. But this Primal Beast loses so much of his HP in a matter of seconds. Medusa realizes she's got no place to be in this fight. Gets turned on with a Concoction. Antares the Sky Rats charging into the back. Zoning out the Primal Beast as Mankushi does have the backup of Gilgit. Pops the Manta. Tries to stand and battle around this bottom lane fight with Ironcrad rejoining. Ramses, no chemical rage. Dropping lower and about to die. The Mystic Snake is there to clear him up. But now with Antares and Miero onto the Medusa. The big ticket kill is taken down. Down. Four for one in the end? And Ironcrad might be the fifth if they can catch a glimpse of him. He doesn't have TP. It's on cooldown for 20 oh, seconds. No. So he's found in the trees. It's a team wipe. Yeah, that's complete disaster. Team wipe into a bounty hunter. Worst thing that you can have happen. Losing all those heroes there. That's such a massive gold swing going towards the nine panel lineup. And we really just saw an attempt to save the Underlord 
but maybe they should just have sold him instead. They tried to take the fight. Ultimately, they didn't have anyone able to jump the Tinker because they were just reacting to the uh, Alchemist initiation. Alchemist jumped in, Primal Beast followed up, and as they go on that with Primal Beast, they don't have anyone to chase the Tinker anymore. And if Tinker's untouched in these fights, he's just going to be doing way too much sustainable damage uh, like over time. It doesn't stop, you know, it's not like some of these other heroes, uh, Primal Beast uses Trample, and then what? Then he just has ulti, like, he runs out of resources. Tinker keeps going. Imagine unlimited damage. We saw, <laughs> we did see Kirtok having a bit of a, a weird, I don't know, a weird spot up in that top lane. He's cancelling rearm, trying to TP, cancelling TP. Not quite sure if he wanted to be there anymore, but he farms out a couple of stacks, clears the top wave, as the rest of his team have gathered up to smoke. And this is the great thing about having this Skyrath Mage. And you've got the Beastmaster to pair with with the Raw. You've got Concoction from the Alchemist. Solo's going to lead the charge and scout forward with a scan from the Radiant. They know one mover down here. Just a matter of getting in position. And they're on the Primal Beast. In comes Miero with the Raw if he needed it to. Lifting his arms, it. but yeah. deciding to hold it for now. They can go onto a secondary target if they can catch a bit of vision here. Just need to get the tracks going. Afterlife is tracked up. And the rest of them getting across the ramp. You know, across the bridge, but Miero, he held that roar for long enough to get in front of the Underlord now, body block him up, and allow Ramses to unload the damage. Another three big kills there for nine pandas, and one move. Yeah, the struggles, they've only just begun. Yeah, they already dropped the tombstone down on Roche, by the way, so there was no way they could oh. take that fight. They just had to get out. But yeah, nice little move by Miero, actually roaring and then moving up and making sure he gets the perfect positioning. It's, you can see him do some precision stepping there to get the perfect block on the bridge. Even if the Underlord was going to live, he was not going to be able to move at all. But uh, now they're going to yoink this Roche, get an Aegis as well, put that over on the Tinker, why not? Already has the BKB, got Sakaya as well after this fight. And you can see Medusa's keeping up in net worth with the Tinker. But there's the Alchemist. That's what we said during the draft. They added one more problem to deal with. It's one more hero. And not to forget, Miero on his Beastmaster. He's looking like a big, important hero to shut down as well in these fights. He's running at the Medusa with no fear in the world. Look at him blinking in bottom. Yeah, yeah he's going straight for this Underlord. The solo, he's got chain stuns for days with these Invis stun hits. Yeah, this Radiant Draft is it's like an onion. It's like Shrek. It's layer after layer. You peel back the Tinker. It's like, oh god, there's an Alchemist there. Peel back the Alchemist. Yeah, it's just more and more. Even wow. Antares on the Scarlet Mage. You know, mentioning him earlier in the fight. Just able to pair up with anybody and find solo. Yeah, basically solo kills. He needs one stun and he can kill attack, anybody. Yeah. Look how he's playing right now. This is some some real oppressive stuff. He, he doesn't even really have kill potential, but he just keeps blinking forward, shoving the enemy all the way out of their own jungle here. This is very difficult to play against. When he has this confidence from the Aegis, it changes the game entirely. Especially Aegis with a BKB respawn. How do you ever kill him now? For the next four minutes, Tinker is free to do whatever he wants. And that's a long time in Dota. Yeah, that should be illegal. Hey, it feels like he's smurfing, honestly, when he's playing Tinker. <laughs> Let's give Taco Lad is out of this world. Uh, he's 10, 2, and 7 already in this game. But I mean, their draft is set up to be the perfect Tinker draft, pretty much. Having the Vision from Beastmaster and Bounty Hunter. Having two different core heroes with stuns on the side lanes. I, I don't know if I could cook up a better Tinker draft if I tried to. No. Oh, it's beautiful. And Solo. Oh, he's been an absolute nuisance. Pipe and four staff, so he's tanky and maneuverable. He forced out the Fiend's Gate of Underlord. Ironcrad on slaughting. Gonna get on top of the Bounty Hunter. But again, it's this move where Solo, if he dies here, it's fine. He's creating He's space. They're gonna, they're gonna bring Kyotaka in. Pulverized immediately. Four Staff, Shiva's Guard, Tanky Tinker. Gonna start spamming out the rockets and blinks away from them. Gets the distance. Double blink into the tree lines. He's out of there. You can't touch this man. Unstoppable stuff. Disengages while the rest of his team's happily farming away. Yep. Tinker just gets away. They don't have enough disables to lock him in place. Even if they did, the PKB was still available. They didn't use it. And even if you did catch him, there was still Aegis. There, there's just so many layers of survivability for him there. No way he's going to go down. Ramses and Antares looking for the next juicy target. It's going to be the tankies. Straight in on them. Kian Tiger finds positioning on the right-hand side of the fight to keep spamming out his spells. Gilga gone and a roar on this primal beast going to... 
I take him to the ends of the earth as well. And I've got the silence he can't onslaught away. And Monkushi, Pantomim, both running to the hills. Hide in your base. Just evacuate the area because Ramsey's just here with his BKB. A shining golden god alchemist in your face with a double kill. Uh, this this game is already completely destroyed. 19,000 gold lead now. These track kills are adding up very quickly as well. And it's not just that. You're not doing anything anymore. Look, they tried to show bottom for a second. Oh, Kiyotaka has E-Blade. He just dives you. Oh, goodness gracious me. Now you're just swarming the Medusa. She's all alone. Everybody else is dead. The graveyard filled, littered with dire hero bodies. And Makushi, okay, surviving. Kiyotaka ran out of mana, so didn't have that unlimited damage to break through the mana shield. But it's, it's just... He's doing zero damage to Beastmaster. Even if he, you know, finally gets to attack after E-Blade runs out, there's this Crimson Guard on Beastmaster. He doesn't take any damage. Well, Gilgus using Blast Off to disengage, but he still jumped! Oh, Kiyotaka, careful with those proxy mines, though. That's the Soul Ring for the TP home. I have to say, Kiyotaka plays Tinker in a hyper-oppressive way. I don't know... If I've seen a Tinker who is so obnoxious, man, he just goes for people. You think that you're in safe position, but look, he's back again. Like he, he's, I, I don't know, it feels like the old Tinker with marching machines, except he's using rockets and lasers as the little marchmen to keep people back. He's, he's just a one-man barrier. Uh, at this point, I mean, I don't know if the entire team of one move has enough to deal with literally just the Tinker. And, of course, Tinker has a very competent team with him here. I don't think there's enough therapists in the world to, de to deal oh, with this no. Tinker. <laughs> oh, curious it's going to be a lot of sessions for this one, dude. Yeah, oh, real rough. I just don't know how he does it. Like, Kiyotaka is, you know, casting all these spells, rearming and blinking, and he's still dropping chat wheel lines from time to time. A <laughs> oh, madman does it all. Yeah, he... I mean, he's done this a few times before, I guess. I mean, you were talking about tempo and rhythm. This Primal Beast hasn't really got off the ground to, to a flying start. Medusa's in a decent spot. But Beastmaster, you know, he's, he's setting that tempo. Bang these drums. Yeah, he's, he's definitely banging the drums. The smoke comes around here. The Last was, ditch effort. Yeah, they're going to try and get a nice initiation here. Wait, are they, are they trying to steal the Tormentor? Ah, Ramsey's in Miero. That's a good time to go and fight. Tormentor dead. Ramsey's blinks across. Miero is focused inside the pit and pulverized down. He's tanky, but not that tanky. And Solo and Ramsey's probably realizing now they need Kiyotaka. Where's my Tinker? Back me up. Try and defend this alchemist as he's on his way out. Halfway through the chemical rage already. They've got the four staff to disengage, but a distance there. The primal beast. A bit ballsy to go that deep. Regroups with the rest of his team and a short-range portal from the Underlord trying to bridge that gap, but they can't latch on to any additional targets. It feels like they're getting such a bad deal every time they get a pickoff. Sure, you get Miro, and by the way, you got like 1,800 gold for that Beastmaster alone. But they can't catch more. No, I mean, Solo is so quick on his feet. A little ballerina dancing, shimmying all across the place, and this Primal Beast getting caught up. Good pit of malice down, though. An alchemist. Oh, he's he dead. ran out of mana. He couldn't BKB. He couldn't get his BKB off. Yeah, he, he only has 19 mana there, so he couldn't actually get the BKB out. Ramsey's overplaying a little bit there, and that's going to be it for Nine Pandas. They're not going to go in and, and engage again. So instead, just backing out, playing the map now. The Tinker is electing to go for a Lincoln Sphere here, realizing that there's still that BKB piercing grab of the Primal Beast ulti. And if you can just stop that, then he's feeling good. And there are not many things to break Lincoln's here. Medusa Snake. Yeah, good luck reaching Tinker with Medusa. Uh, Primal Beast only has his ulti. And then there's Soul Rip. And that's it. That's literally it. You, you only have Soul Rip or Mystic Snake to break the Lincoln's. Yeah, now we have... Well, honestly, one of the wildest talents in the game, in my opinion, is this level 20. 25% cooldown reduction from Defense Matrix. Yeah. So now you've got Beastmaster with roars all the time. You've got Alchemist who can get off more chemical rages and stuff like that. I think that that talent is low-key busted, but I yeah. wouldn't want that talent to be nerfed. I want the rest of Tinker to be nerfed, you know? That talent is cool, at least. But, you know, I want the Tinker part of Tinker to be nerfed. <laughs> this this is more like team play, you know? Oh, I can buff others. Like That's kind of cool. I wouldn't mind if Tinker does that. It's the whole... Blinking and uh, shitting all over the place that I don't like. 
So you're saying we should go back to, I don't know, 2007 or whatever it was with Ducky playing support Tinker, huh? Uh, yes. Yeah. That man definitely had some ideas of how to play Dota 2. I mean, uh, who knows? You can always do things differently. I've seen some boss 4 Tinkers. I've seen some boss 3. The Astalink is complete. Comes from bottom. This might be one move trying to make a stand here. Smoke up coming in from 9 Pandas, so though. This will be difficult to hold. This is, this is game defining. This could just be the bitter end that one move have kind of been holding off. Medusa shows her face. I don't Tinker see anyone else mana. behind. Thank you, Taka, with a reset. Concoction, Roar. Oh, Manta dodges the start of the fight. They get the Roar now onto Mankushi. That's a good Tombstone placement in the middle of it all. Mystic Flare's there on Illusions. And Aincrab trying to get into the back lines. Miero incredibly tanky, healing up. A seal Totem to shift him off to the side of the fight. And another Concoction stopping Medusa in her tracks. They've lost the Beast. The Undying's dead. And nine pandas haven't lost anybody yet. It's escape time run. But how can you get away from this? The Shivas is coming. The Tinker is coming. A good pit of malice, but they've got four staff blink dagger. Jump over the chasm that's created. And the Medusa just trying to hide back up on her high ground. Maybe can kill off Solo on the way out, but he survived on 10 HP. And the Tinker keeps on going. Miero frontlining and the buybacks from one move. It might keep nine pandas away from their base for now. But Pantomime, you've got to be so, so careful. He's going in. They're jumping in. With the out getting onto the high ground. And the Tinker just blowing them up. The Medusa didn't last a second when Kiyotaka has her in her sight. No buybacks left for one move. They might just be forced to call GG now. He's hiding. Pantomime is like, please don't find me. And they got him. And Kiyotaka is sniping couriers near the fountain. Aincrad is there. Defending as well. But Ramses and Kiyotaka spamming sprays, high-fiving in front of them. The disrespect. Just, just tap out. It, it's all over, man. They're, they're hanging in there, but at this point, it's just abuse. Brum, brum, brum. I swear, it's looking time. like a straight-up pay-to-win character when you see a good Tinker player in a good Tinker game get their items and there's just nothing that you can do about it. It's like... Reminds me of a, a big brother holding his hand on the forehead of a younger brother. Like, you can't reach me kind of thing. That's literally what Tinker is. You're going to have as many free hits as you want, but you're not going to land any. Yeah, swing. Swing, nerd. <laughs> and now the systematic dismantling of the Dire Base. One by one, the buildings crumble. And Miero, he does get a jump roar onto the Primal Beast. Alchemist concoction turned back by the Lotus Orb. Iron Crown, very tanky with Havis and Solar Crest placed on him. Withstands the first round of fighting. And what's that? A nullifier from the Medusa trying to clip onto Ramses. That's a smart oh choice. Goodness. It's a good item for this game, at least. You know, it prevents the four staff from uh, Solo. It removes the barrier from Tinker. It's a very useful item. And Medusa trying to get creative here in how he can impact the game. He's also trying to build an MKB next, realizing that can't go for standard items if you're going to win this one. Munkoshi doing what he can. There's so much to do. Yeah, Roche yeah, is Roshan. up. Scanning. It's about oh, to move so top soon. So I think uh, maybe they will go top and control the top area instead. I just saw Solo by a scythe of ice. Looked at the net worth board to look for the bounty hunter. He's, he's ahead of the primal beast. 14,000 net worth bound. Oh, Kiyotaka blinks forward, blinks away. <laughs> oh, the pit came a second too late. They but do still have the problem. He has Lincoln Kiyotaka. Still. He's got so much to defend himself. And he's so tanky, taking literally no damage. Aincrad, he's going to go back and lick his wounds. I mean, Solo's in. Antares there, defending Kiyotaka with his BKB up. He's now untouchable. And this will allow Ramses and Miero to go on to Makushi's Medusa. The Nullfire? Shred through the mana pool. Kiyotaka is still alive. E bladed up. He might die. Get the Tinker. Somebody so finish him off. He can't die. He just cannot. He drops the flipping smiley faces in the all chat oh as well. You 5v1 me and I'm still standing, boys. Yeah, they can't bring him down. <laughs> they used everything they could. Even oh. at that point, you know, you use every bit of resource you can and you still can't kill the Tinker. Meanwhile, the rest are just freely wailing at you. The Beastmaster and the Alchemist just going in and right-clicking. You see how people just fall. 
This is why I don't get about Tinker, though. Why does he have to have so much survivability, man? Why is he so thick? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, he's a wide boy. But yeah, GG's cool. It's, it's over. They they understand. There's just absolutely no way. A few of them are just <laughs> left, left Discord. They're out of there. No player counts for them. Nine pandas really cementing themselves as the best team in Eastern Europe. Yeah. I mean, both, both locally and in, internationally. Yeah, this, I mean, this was a very dominant performance. Game one was already one-sided. Game two, it was over at minute, like, 19 or something. It was over very early. And honestly, from the draft, it just looked impossible. I don't know how their draft is supposed to beat. Now that you know that there is, you know, if not the best tinker in the world on this tinker player, how are you going to counter it with the draft that you have? You need so many tools to shut down a good tinker and when you pick stuff like undying it's great for laning stage sets up medusa nicely sets her up for what how does medusa deal with a tinker you know it's hard if you play against nine pandas either ban the tinker or cook something that deals with tinker all the way through you can't have these like top lane doesn't do anything at all against tinker and bottom lane is an underlord and a techies which also doesn't do anything to tinker it's all on you Einkrad. here handle him oh he bought lincoln's well too, too bad yeah, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I just popped my head into chat and I can see people saying Skyrath Basher. Casters don't even notice, but I did not notice that Skyrath bought a Basher. And I've, <laughs> I I didn't click on Skyrath for the past 15 minutes of the game. Yeah, to be honest with Basher, you. Yeah. He had Midas Mom, BKB Basher, Phase Boots on Skyrath Mage. Antares, absolute giga chat. <laughs> I mean, I, th that just highlights exactly what? what we were saying, though. This Tinker could win the game on his own here, yeah. which is why you're free to do what you want. You want to buy a Rapier? Go ahead, buy a Rapier, buy a Basher. Yeah, Antares definitely having some fun with this. He's been here before. He's played with Kiyotakia Tinker before, and he realizes I, I, it doesn't really matter too much what I'm doing this game. So he goes for some uh, some nice right-click build here on uh, Skyrath. I enjoy that. That's very yeah, cool. Yeah, it's one of those, you know, 100% 100% win rate builds. Like, who has gone Mom Midas Basher phase on Skyrath? Nobody, and I won with it. So, yeah, obviously, it's a winning build. I mean, he's genius because he went Vindicator's Axe with Mask of Madness to <laughs> silence himself so he gets more damage. <laughs> Antares is on to something big for Skyrath here. This is this is huge, man. Okay, he's got the mom as well, doesn't he? Oh, I mean, yeah, just glorious stuff in and out from Nine Pandas there. Yeah, for themselves, I mean, putting themselves, staying at the top of the table. Three series wins for them so far, looking very good. And for one move, yeah, I mean, that was, that was a series you're probably not going to win, but yeah, probably needed a victory there to try and sneak into that top three spot. Because we're, we're always looking at Eastern Europe where top two teams are pretty well defined and determined. And the third slot is quite often up for grabs. We'll see how that all progresses as well. That, that rounds up another day here. It's just the one series today. But we'll be back next week with plenty more Dota 2 action. Anything else you want to say as we close out the show? Nerf Tinker. <laughs> <laughs> I, Absolutely. I, I mean, well done, Nine Pandas, but I am not a fan of this hero. I, I knew that we were going to see it in the series, and I knew that I was going to be disgusted. I am, uh, you know, accurately very disgusted after watching this, but uh, yeah, please, Ice Frog, please. <laughs> yeah, do something. Nerf that Tinker. But anyway, yeah, catch you all next week. Yeah, have a good weekend, the rest of you. Rest of your Sunday. We'll see you next time.